picking up on our third lesson of soul winning or public ministry and we're going to pick up our place if you turn to proverbs 11 verse 30 and we're not going to go too long into a rehab what we have because there's videos and there's audio youtube and soundcloud you need to get those other places on the web and what we've been looking at is basically what to do, how to do, where to do, why to do on soul winning, the public ministry. What's right and what's wrong? What's the outcome? So as we pick up now in Proverbs 11.30 and part 5 of this lesson so far, I believe it is, we're going to look at wisdom. Wisdom. Proverbs 11.30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. And that's where we get the expression win souls. Soul winner. Comes right out of the Bible. Now some people have taken it to the extent, you know, they'll do anything and everything to put a notch on their belt. And you say, well, Brother Hey, what's a notch in your belt? Is we got 500 people saved this week. 400 people said this prayer. We led 2,000 people to Christ. And there's dangers in that. People are not really getting saved. In violation of what we're learning here. And I hopefully this entire study, if you take it from lesson one and to whatever we end. And properly. Rightfully. Witness to people about Jesus Christ and the saving power of Jesus Christ. And when they truly desire to be saved, then that will be the wisdom, the tree of life. Now, soul winning achieves extra wisdom. There is wisdom of knowing how to pray. There is wisdom on how to read your Bible. There is wisdom on David. There is knowing things and understanding things about Solomon, Paul, Jesus. There's wisdom on the ministries. And he that winneth souls is wise. He that's doing. Noah tried to win souls. And would you say he was a failure when only seven others were saved on that ark? His wife, his three sons and their three wives. He didn't have thousands saved. He didn't have 10,000 saved. He didn't have 400 saved. He didn't even baptize any of his converts. Those that were baptized in Noah's day were the ones that drowned in the, in the waters in the flood and died and went to hell. But there to those who do witness some form of way of public ministry there is more wisdom than those that do not witness. For an active person trying to win souls, there is wisdom over those that do not try to win souls or do not do it or giving up. Now again, when I say public ministry, it could be just passing out tracts. It could be leaving tracts. It could be talking to people, stopping them, dealing with them one-on-one. -on -one. It could be visiting a nursing home. It could be visiting a prison. You can go door knocking. You can street preach. However, it does not say the fruit of the righteous is, a, is the tree of life and he that wins his souls by what we do is wise. Or he that wins his souls by goes with us only or he that does only prison ministries. Listen, you can be a soul winner. As much as a prayer warrior. Being bedridden in a hospital or some kind of hospital facility. Your entire life. And yet you can pray and you can soul win. You say, well, how can I do that? I can't go anywhere. Don't you have doctors and nurses and family and people come visiting you? You can witness to those doctors. You can witness to those nurses. When I was in the hospital, there were people that come daily 
or every other day, I, th I forget what it was, they come to clean your room, mop and clean and all that, and you witness to them. Give them, you know, they figure, say, hey, you did a good job, here's a gospel track. Have your family bring you gospel tracks and keep them by your bedside. And when somebody comes and they're about to leave and you're about to say your farewell, here, I'd like to give you a gospel track for you spending time or whatever you've done for me. Here's something very important. Boom, you, you're witnessing. And that's wisdom. How many Christians out there, they go to church, they go to church three times a week, and they give money, but they don't tell others about Jesus Christ. There's no wisdom. And the more you do a public ministry, the more you're going to grow, the more you're going to get knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You're going to be corrected by your mistakes and your errors to do better. You're going to find new ways when you're dealing with people. You're going to walk away from them. How do I answer? What do I do? I don't know. And then you go home, you study, you read your Bible, and then you go answer that maybe not that person, or maybe that person, or somebody who's in that religion or in that aspect of life. Now you bring Bible knowledge on how to help people deal with them. So r wisdom rightly to present the gospel to the lost. I say rightly because there's a wrongly, if that's a word. Let the Lord do the producing and the results. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 3 6. And you got to understand there's a wrong way to do it, and there's a right way to do it. And one of the dangers of the wrong way is you may have people who think they're saved. You may have people who think others are saved. And they're not. And while you're turning to 1 Corinthians 3, 6, I want to look up another verse here. I don't have this in my notes. I think I should. While you're looking at that, So 1 Corinthians 3, 6. Wisdom. This is Paul speaking to the Corinthians. A carnal church. I have planted. Paul has put out seeds. Mark chapter 4. And so when it is liking to... Uh, uh, maybe we'll go after it. Mark chapter 4. But so winning is likened to a man planting seeds. Paul says, I plant, I put seeds out everywhere I can do. That gospel track, that preaching, that talking, that open Bible. Those are seeds. Well, 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 hopefully I don't forget, maybe we'll go there today. It's not in my notes for that. I don't know, if we, I think we would go there, but uh, we can go there and we go there again later. Repetition. So I have planted. Apollos watered. When you plant seeds and plant replant plants, you got to water them. No water and they die. No seeds, they don't come up. If you don't put seeds out there, there's going to be no wisdom to bring water. There's going to be no crops. But God gave the increase. Now, notice when we read in Proverbs 11, it says, tree of life. There's fruit. Life and fruit is accountable to the public ministry, the soul winning. And Paul says, I planted. Apollos came along in water, but God gave the increase. There's the fruit. You're not going to save nobody. Don't you dare go out there and say, hey, I've, I've heard this video, I've heard this audio, and I'm ready to go out there, and I'm going to get people saved. You know, you're not. The only part you have, and get this as wisdom, in soul winning in the public ministry, is you're either going to plant, or you're going to water. God is going to save them. You save no one. God saves. It's the men that are sent. So wisdom number one on this fact is, you don't save nobody. So don't go say, hey, I went out witnessing or, or however you've done it, and I got a man saved. No, you didn't. 
if you got them saved, they're going to hell and they're going to burn forever. If God saved them and you rightly did what you're supposed to do and there is true salvation, God saved them. Now, in this verse, Paul said, I planted Apollos water. There could have been times that Apollos watered. I mean, Apollos planted. And Paul watered. We are one of two aspects of a three-part, I don't want to say program, uh, soul winning effort. There is a planter, there is a waterer, and there is God that gives increase. And you realize, when you're dealing with somebody, you, you, one of the things you're going to is this the first time this guy's ever heard the gospel? Is this the first time this guy has ever been witnessed to? Or has somebody planted seed? Has somebody worked on this guy? Has somebody talked to this guy? And am I applying the water? It takes a work. takes men for a garden to grow. So, wisdom is, it takes men to witness. Wisdom is, we don't save them. God does. Now let's look at Acts chapter 10. And we'll see about this. Acts chapter 10, men do the work. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. And what we're going to look at here is we're going to look at another little aspect here. And I don't want to limit God. But on the special resources of Acts chapter 10. We'll back up 1 Corinthians 3, 6. It says Acts chapter 10 verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. A centurion of the band called the Italian band. A devout man. Starting off good. One that feared God. Better. If you were to meet a man like that, Cornelius on the streets. And all his house. Now that's remarkable. His entire house. Loves and are devoted to God. Which gave much alms, not just alms, much. This is the Holy Spirit recording about Cornelius before anybody shows up to him, to the people, and pray to God always. Remarkable testimony. You pray for men like this to meet them, but many you'll meet won't be devoted. They won't fear God. Their houses, they don't even know who, who's in their house. They give alms so they can record it on the 1040. And they pray to a God, not to God, nor is it capital G. He saw in his vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him. So here's an angel that shows up. To a man that is rightly loving and doing to God. All right? Oh, I saw an angel. And saying unto him, Cornelius, this is the angel. And when he looked on him, he, he was afraid. He said, What is it, Lord? He said to him, Thy prayers, thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Okay, did you get that? Here's a man that loves God. He's not saved. We can go get go get Joppa. Go to Joppa and get Peter. Peter's gonna come and Peter's gonna witness to him. And this man and his family are gonna get saved if you're to finish the chapter. He is not saved now. If he were to die right now in this chapter, he'd be burning hell. Now, after Acts chapter 10, verse 44, if he were to die, he'd go to heaven, but he's lost. And an angel shows up. And that angel says nothing but go get Peter, a saved man. Now Hebrews says, there, there, whereby entertain angels unaware. 
I'm not going to say that God is not going to send an angel to you. Absolutely not. And let me find, there's another place here I need to find, too, while I'm talking about these angels. Uh, an angel shows up to Cornelius, and the only thing that angel says is, hey, listen, God, has a record of you. He has a record of your prayers. He has a record of your alms. He has a memorial come up to God. I am here to tell you, go get a Christian. And he has to tell you. Now Paul says in Galatians chapter 1 verse 8, But though we, or an angel from heaven, Preach any other gospel unto you, that which is, we have not preached unto you, let him be accursed. Now here's an angel that shows up to men, and he preaches a gospel, but is not the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. If an angel comes to you and says, worship this man, the angel that shows up to Cornelius says, don't worship Peter. Go get Peter. You get that. That angel did not come and say, fall down and make me a statue. No heavenly angel of God ever has man worship him. They don't allow it. Angels of God know they are not to be worshipped. Okay? And the message of the angel is, go get Peter. It was the angel that told him for another man, Peter. And not Peter the Pope, not Peter the Catholic, Peter the Apostle of Jesus Christ with the witness and the testimony of Jesus the Salvation. Now Peter was not all too wise to the Gentiles. To receiving the Jewish Messiah as a Savior. Peter was Jewish. And after Peter obeyed, let's look at here. Send one unto Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. And call Simon. We don't want to interrupt this guy. We don't want to confuse this guy with that Pope in Rome, Peter. Peter is not the first Pope. Never was, never will be. He lodges with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he sent two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them and waited on him continually. He sends the men out. They'll go get Peter. And he's waiting. He even sends a soldier to protect them. And Peter gets his vision. God's Sending a vision that Gentiles are no longer unclean. There's a door open to the Gentiles. Peter has his little thing. Verse 23. Then called he them in. And these men of Cornelius shows up. I haven't read all the chapter. But the men that Cornelius sent out, we just read, they show up. Then called he unto them in and lodged them. And on the morrow Peter went away with them. And certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And tomorrow they enter into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them. And he called together his kinsmen and his near friends. Cornelius calls a whole bunch of people. He calls all his friends and all his family. There's a man coming, and he's going to preach to us Jesus. Or the gospel, whatever this angel's message from God. This man, Peter, Simon, is going to come. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Here's a man falling down before Peter. This is supposedly the first pope. But Peter took him up saying, Stand up. I myself also am a man. Look at that. Peter is getting worshipped. He's got a man falling down before him. And he tells him, Get up. You don't worship me. And that's the only Catholic remark I'm going to make about this. And he talked with him. He went in and found many that were 
come together. He walks in, here's a whole bunch of people sitting around waiting. And Cornelius explains what happened, what's going on. Verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that fears him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Now you see the wisdom that Peter learned. The nations, not only Israel, the nations now have an open door to the gospel. Had Peter told God, no, I ain't going there. I ain't doing it. They're Gentiles. They stink. They eat miserable food. I'm not going. Peter would never learn 34 and 35. What was the wisdom that Peter learned? The Gentiles are now getting saved. How? Peter went. Peter went. Now, Mark chapter 16. Again, Mark 16. Verse 15. You know, it takes wisdom how to know to grow a garden. How to plant seeds. Where to plant seeds. You can just, you know, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of wisdom. And Mark 16, 15, e, Jesus is preaching to men, not angels, not animals. And he said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And when you do that, you'll get wisdom. You'll know things about religions that people don't wisdom, witness don't. And it won't be foolish knowledge. It'll be how to deal with the next one. Now Mark chapter 4. I guess this is not in my notes for today. But let's break off Mark chapter 4. While we're on this subject. In verse 1. We'll go here and then we'll stop for today. And he began to teach by the seaside. And there, was a, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so there's a lot of people. So they entered into a ship and sat in the sea. <laughs> look, look at that pulpit. That pulpit's a rowboat, a fishing boat, or something that is out in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. They were on the beach. He's in a boat, and he's preaching to them. Well, he's using the water as an amplifier. Jesus would not ever yell or scream. He's got amplification here. To people on the beach that's not sun tanning, they're listening to Jesus. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine. Hearken. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. Here's a guy with seeds. He's got seeds. And he sold. And it came to pass as he sold, he some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured them up. So they're out on the wayside, the birds come. Well, nothing with those seeds. And some fell, you know, there's some seeds that if a bird eats and poops them, they'll grow. They will not grow. They will not do anything unless they've been through the digestion system of a bird. There are trees in California. You know, you hear about all these fires. They will not produce a seed that will grow until they've been burnt. You got to have wisdom. You want to plant a particular plant? You got to know what needs to be done. There are certain procedures for certain seeds. But, and some fell on stony ground where it had not much Earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked it. And it yielded no fruit. So it was a plant, but it didn't do nothing. You didn't get no green beans. You didn't get no... Uh, tomatoes didn't get an apple. And others fell on good ground and did yield fruit. 
Run that back to Proverbs 11 about the tree of life, fruit. That sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100 whole. Okay. So the disciples sitting there scratching their head. Okay, what was all that about? In verse 13, he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower, verse 14, soweth the word. That's the word of God. Are you passing out gospel tracts? Are you witnessing using your King James Bible? Are you preaching the King James Bible to people? Are you involved in a public ministry soul winning with the word of God? There you go. Now we're going to look at now the four fields of men that you will deal with in any public ministry. Ready? And I said we may do this later again, but it's always good to do it again. And these are they by the wayside. All right, your seeds fell by the wayside, where the word is sown. See, the seed is the word. But when they have heard. You pass out gospel tracts, they read it. You show them the Bible, they're reading and listening to you. You're preaching to them, they hear you. The first ground is Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. So number one, public ministry, number one, soul winner. You have Satan on your back. And when somebody comes to you, well, where's your 100%? Where's our thousands? Where's 2,000? Where's the 5,000 people that got saved? Number one wisdom that you'll learn today is Satan will follow you, and he'll grab that gospel track, and he'll have the person rip it up. He'll have the person throw it in the garbage can. He'll have the person throw it in the ground. He'll have the person say, I don't want that. He'll have the person be activating something else where he won't hear you. But he'll hear you, but he won't hear you. Satan will do whatever he will do. That's the first ground of a public ministry. And we have seen it often, and we have witnessed it often. When you, you see somebody, they, they are attentive, they, they are listening, they are, and then somebody comes along and messes the whole thing up. We have put gospel tracts into little children's hands and had the mothers, had the fathers rip it out of their hands in anger. That's Satan. Number one in your wisdom of the public ministry is Satan is first behind your heels. He does not want those people to hear the gospel. He does not want them people to respond to the gospel. Number one wisdom, and we could end right there. Is there a Satan? Is there a devil? You get out there in a public ministry, soul winning, telling people about Jesus Christ, through the Bible, and you will see Satan take active. You will see Satan right behind you. And you will see that word that you have produced to lost people. You will see that word be removed from the people. Countless times. Many years of the lives I have been involved. I have seen. Verse 16. And that immediately, whoa. Immediately taking away the word that was sown in their heart. What did Romans 10 say? With the heart man believes unto righteousness. So Satan does not want that word in their heart. He'll go in the ears and go out the other ear. He'll go in their hands and will get thrown out. We will hire a DJ so they cannot hear the word of God. We'll have somebody, oh come look at this. There is no salvation in verse 15. There is no salvation in verse 15. There is no salvation in verse 15. So the first part of Jesus' parable is you're not going to get everybody saved. The first part of this parable is Jesus Christ said, this is the words of Jesus Christ, Satan will come along and he'll grab that word and no salvation. Fifteen. Five plus five plus five. Fifteen. Five is the number of death in the Bible. Okay. Sixteen. And these are they likewise which have sown on stony ground. Here's number two of the people you're going to witness to. Number two. The ground is soil. I mean the ground is stony. 
who, when they have heard the word, the word again, the seed, the gospel tract, you're opening a Bible and dealing with them. You're preaching to them. The word. Immediately receive it with gladness. Look at that. Wow, that sounds good. Oh, interesting. Tell me more. And have no root in themselves. They have no faith in themselves. God couldn't save someone like me. I'm just so wicked. God would never love me as much as you're telling me about. Oh, if I could only do that, but no, I... And so endure, but for a time. They're there. Afterwards, when affliction or persecution arises for the word, for the word's sake. Why are you listening to that guy? You hear what he's saying? Is that a Bible you're holding? What's that piece of paper in your hand? Uh, nothing. Uh, not, nothing really important. Come on, let's go to the store. Let's go to the movies. I see that. I have gained people's attention at the flea market and talking to them and getting them information. Oh, honey, come over here. Look at this. That's my wife and my daughter. And then you'll never see them back again. They're gone. They don't bother. They could walk by your table 15 times that rest of that day. And guess what? They're no longer interested. They were there for a while. But they got distracted. And Matthew 13 is unfruitful. Arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And for persecution, there are people who will give up. Their family will pick on them. They may have the cops come after them. They may have people get in their face and cuss them out. They may, oh, this is what, not what Jesus would do. No, really? No, Jesus wouldn't do it. And then they walk away. They're offended. We're in a nation of being offended today. Everybody's offended, but not rightly offended. So you see, offended, offended is in the Bible. And one of the things being offended is because of the Word of God. And they give up. What? Were they saved? Are they saved? That's between them and God. I don't know. See? I don't know. It's so simple to say, I don't know. When we don't know. But Jesus said, offended at his words. Okay. Verse 18, 666. And these are they which are sown among thorns. This is your third ground. You got the wayside. You got the stony ground. You got thorns. Three. So what's the thorns? Such as hear the word. They're listening to you. That sounds great, doesn't it? They are actually listening to you. Wisdom number one. Satan will come and he'll grab that seed from them. Wisdom number two. They will hear. They will receive. They have no root. Persecution drives them away. These are with sown among the thorns such as hear the word. And the cares of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And that can go again to the fact is, like I said with the flea market, here we're dealing with somebody and they get called off to another table. He said, well, how can it be the one you just mentioned? The first time I mention it is, well, if my wife or husband sees me with the, with this guy, uh, better not. <laughs> I, I gotta go. They're you know, they're gonna make fun of me. The people at that other table are gonna say, "Were you at that table? You know what kind of guy that is? You wouldn't do anything like that." 
for then again here they listen and now in the thorns the thorns is defeat is riches is the world is the lust I can't do that because I enjoy my sin I can't do that because I fish on Sunday I can't do that because this the world is more important See you. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Have a good day. I don't want to hear any more. See that one. And these are they which are sown on good ground. Number four. Wayside. Stony ground. Thorns. Good ground. Such as they hear the word, now notice verse 15, they heard. Verse 16, they heard. Verse 18, they heard. Verse 20, they heard. 15, 16, 18, 20 they heard they are listening I had one time one of the times when I was at the farmers market and they hired a DJ to, to overpower me and all that to make it so they couldn't hear the preaching so where I was I was preaching my time and the music was loud and that so I, I say something I, forget what, I, I asked a question and to their unknowledge and unavail is they answered the question I put out there. Aha, they're listening. They may not act like they're listening, but they are listening. And no matter where the ground is, they listen. Go eat all the world and preach the gospel. Mark chapter 4 says they're going to listen. Satan is going to hinder them. Defended, offended is going to drive them away. Riches and deceit and lust are going to drive them away. Ground number four is good. Such as hear the word and receive it. And bring forth fruit. Proverbs. Some 30 fold, some 60, some 100. So the fourth ground is a definite salvation they receive christ as their savior okay and proverbs eleven thirty. they are going out and winning souls themselves and gaining wisdom now with soul winning and here we go where we started off again People, the world, other Christians are going to expect you to have 100%. Okay, here. 30, 60, 100. But let's look at the fields. The wayside. No one gets saved. So already we're starting the ground of soul winning the public ministry. There is a ground that produces absolutely nothing at all. So that tells you right there. Guess what? You will have failures in your public ministry. Satan will be there behind your back doing his work. Number two, you will have stony ground. Are they saved? I don't know. But I'll say half saved, half not saved. So you still got ground where it produces nothing. And if it does produce something, they don't stick around. They go away. They will not be fruitful Christians. They're saved, but they will not win souls. They will not be wise. Number three, you got the thorns. Are they saved? 
I don't know. So let's go half ground, save, half ground, unsaved. And those that do get saved are not going to go out and witness. They're not going to, because they're too busy fishing. They're too busy at the, instead of going to the ball game with the gospel of Jesus Christ, they're going to the ball game to watch the ball game. And we've seen again at the flea market. Oh, we're at the flea market to buy, but we won't stay at the flea market to witness. So let's give it half ground, yes, half ground, no. So already out of three grounds, we have definitely, we take the half save, half not save, half save and half not save. We have already two grounds, one the wayside, half the stony ground, half the thorns, we've already got two grounds that produce nothing at all. So there's your answer to, is everybody going to get saved? Absolutely not. Now, with a, with a good ground, let's take the half that were saved, believed to be saved, on the stony ground, and half to be possibly saved on the thorny ground, with the good ground, now you got you got two grounds, no, two grounds, yes, on the field for results. But on one-fourth of that ground, of that seed you put out, are there people who get saved that produce 30, 60, and 100? So that good ground's broken into three. 30, 60, and 100 fold. Not all Christians produce 100% that get saved and are actively in the ministry. You may be 30-fold. That's better than no-fold. Better would be 60-fold. But there's no condemnation to the 30 and 60-fold compared to the 100-fold. That's just what, hey, you go out in the public witness and you got a job. You're supposed to pay your bills. You got a little more time at 60, what is it, 60 fold. But you're still on the good ground, and we're still trying to win souls. We're still being wise. And it's a great work. A lot better than those who, who don't, who do get saved and don't do nothing at all. And it's much better than those who will not get saved as we saw those grounds, and die and go off into eternity in hell and burn forever. And notice the seed, notice the fruit, the tree of life. Notice the references as we go through this study as plant. And how many did I get saved? Brother Haber, how many people have you gotten saved in entire ministry? I'll tell you exactly how much. Ooh. Tell us, when we get to the judgment seat of Christ, and my works are laid down before the fire. When I get to the judgment seat of Christ, and I get people come up to me and wrap their arms around me because I supported a missionary that went to their land and they received Christ. When I meet somebody on the street and I think hey that's a lost clause nothing's ever going to happen to them and I see them in glory and they come up and shake my hand and say I'm glad you spent that few minutes with me I had this guy come up to me and I received Christ as my Savior the results of what I do for the public ministry will be seen at the judgment seat of Christ anything else I'd be just bragging and boasting and lying with pride Bible tells me go in all the world and preach the gospel that's what I'm going to do and as a result of you preaching the gospel, you will gain wisdom. Proverbs 11.30 You may have somebody come up to you and I wouldn't let an angel told me to call you. I got a premonition to, to, to come and contact you. I'm here because God told me to come here. These people told me to come see you. Acts chapter 10. Don't you laugh at those people. 
Because that's Acts chapter 10 with Cornelius. Cornelius said, Peter, I saw an angel. He told me to go get you. You may have people who don't know how to witness. And they're like, hey, I know Brother Hayward. Go see Brother Hayward. Call Brother Hayward. Email Brother Hayward. And they'll say, well, my uncle, my aunt, or somebody, uh, my friend Joe told me. That may happen. But on the field, I want you to learn right now when you say, I'm going out to witness. I'm going to go preach the gospel, whether it's gospel track, whatever it is. I want you to rest assured. Turn around. There's Satan. Look ahead. There he is. Look to the right. Look to the left. There he is. He'll be picking up those gospel tracks. He'll be picking up your word. He'll be trying to drown your words out. He will try to get those people down. No, 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 no. You watch him. He'll be there. You will see people in the public ministry that will absolutely never, ever do anything by you going out and doing what God told you to do. And you can count that to Satan. You'll have people come up to you, oh, I don't think I'm really, I don't think God could save someone. I really don't know. I'm not sure. I may have been saved. Uh, that's a stony ground. Okay. Well, I got my business. And I got, you know, I can't go to the church. I, I, I got to do that. I, I, listen, I, I got to go. I got an investment. I got, I got to go to the bank. I got to go to work. I got to uh, thorns. Really? Is that what the Bible says? Show me more. Am I really that sinner? Am I? I really like to ask Christ as my, uh, my Savior. Good ground. And then when, if, if, I said, I've, I've had people I brought to the Lord, seed planting and watering, God gave the increase, and are they witnessing? Are they doing it? I don't know. That's between them and God. I don't know. What about you is hearing this video, listening to this audio? Will you be wise? Let's go back to Proverbs 11.30 and we'll close. Proverbs 11.30. You know, the, the hardest step is that first step. That's the hardest step. But do it. And the next step will be not ease, but It'll help you even more. And then take another step. Listen, as a baby who's going to learn how to walk, that first step you make, you may hit the ground flat. Right in your face. I don't know. I thank God the first step I took, I walked back and forth to the car. I don't know how many times. I God, I ain't doing this. This is stupid. And he showed me the Bible. Yeah, it's foolish. I'll do it. One of the kids said, God, there's no one here. It's cold. There's no one here to hear me. Just open your big mouth and I'll fill it. And when I opened my mouth and quoted, started quoting John 3, 16, windows began to open. I think, you know, let me get into this as you're turning to Proverbs 11, 30. You know what my times I've been in the ministry and I even said to myself, no one's listening. There's no one here. This has been at Ocean Walk. This has been in the Norwich. This has been at the Farmer's Market. That moment I say, there's no one here who's going to listen. And then I open up my Bible and I open up my mouth. Then you start seeing the crowds. It's like, where are all these people? And then you stop preaching. And then it goes away. Again. It's like, where did all these people go? It's a wonderful thing. Take that step and keep walking. And remember, Satan's trying to trip you. Not only is he grabbing the gospel, but he's going to try to trip you. Don't fall. Keep going. Proverbs 11.30 The fruit Oh, there's that sower. There you are. But Sometimes those 
seeds won't produce anything at all because they've been gathered up and thrown in the garbage. They've been eaten by the birds. The fruit of the righteous. I forget what, 30, 60, 100 percent? Both? The fruit of the right, righteous. God calls you righteous when you partake of the public or soul winning. The fruit of the righteous shall. One minute. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of what? Tree? Some trees come from seeds, nuts. Of life. Life. Eternal life. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans chapter 10. How shall they know? How shall they hear? Except you go in the world and preach the gospel. He that winneth souls is why. It's a winning event to try to witness. It's a winning event to go out and preach the gospel. It is wise in the eyes of God. It is a beauty of the feet of the preacher that carries the gospel. Please, get out there and do it. You're already doing? Please, do not quit. Have you quit? Please, get back and go. Jesus is coming. And when Jesus comes, the judgment seat of Christ will come. And you cannot go back and undo what you didn't do.